right, uh, another game going on Sunday, the big one Sunday night. Patriots at the Colts, Deflate Gate 2 rematch. You know, Tom Brady of the Patriots, uh, he can play with deflated balls or not because right now 11 touchdowns, no interceptions on the season. This team is number one in the NFL in yards, then number one in scoring, 37.3 per game. It still tops in third down efficiency. The win they come off of against Dallas was impressive. It ended up being a, a blowout, 30-6, to six, but if you watched it, it didn't see, feel like a blowout. Patriots offensive line uh, allowed five sacks early on, and it was a good tight defensive battle. Have to give Rod Marinelli, the defensive coordinator of Dallas Cowboys, a lot of credit with that unique 3-2-6 defensive scheme that he put in. It caused the Pats a lot of problem. But what they do all the time is they make adjustments in the second half. Uh, this coaching staff is so good at it, and they did that again and really ran away with it. Uh, so this team scored 30 points despite the fact that the offense had all kinds of problems. So here they are. However, they really owned the month of October. The Patriots 35-15-2 against the spread. So when you look at the, the wagering matchups here, we got a motion, revenge, we got home field, situationals. How do you see it? We've got snitch gate. That's what we've got. <laughs> yeah, that too. This is a game that has been circled on New England ever since Indianapolis snitched on them last year and took that ball in at halftime and they waited or whatever and they came out in the second half and says, hey guys, look at this, you know, they're cheaters. Oh my God, uh, they've been waiting for this game. And like you said, Brady, last week, 20 of 27, 275 yards, no picks. Uh, my gosh, I mean, for the year, 72%, no picks, 11 touchdowns. I mean, 37 point average. Something is going on with this team, and it might go on and on and on and on. You know, they caught injuries last week with uh, Do Romo. This week, uh, no luck. Uh, I don't think he's going to play. Matt Hasselback, is he the answer? He had none bad, 63% completion, about 500 yards. Uh, you know, not bad in the last two games. Three touchdowns. But, you know, this team has 14 players that are over 30. So they've been around, and I'm not saying this, but they've been around long enough to know what New England has done the last three games rushing. You know, everybody thinks that it's Brady and he's going to be throwing it to everybody. The last three games versus Indianapolis, they've rushed for 234 yards, 246 yards, and 177 yards. Nobody gets numbers like that. 13 touchdowns. Let me tell you something, this has blowout written all over it, and I am not a favorite better, as you guys know. But there's no stopping this team. You might stop them next week or the week after, or maybe they'll slow themselves down, or maybe they'll be an anomaly or something down the road. But this is ready, aim, fire, focused. They've been having this game right circled. I, I'm telling you, there's no doubt that they are going to do worse uh, to Indy than they did to Dallas last week. What was the final last week? Like 37 to 6 or something? Uh, they just right blowout. Right now the line, look at the line. It's already moved so much. I think it's up to what, eight and a half? It's going to hit 10 and it could even go higher. Bet it early, bet it often. That's it. New England, lay the points. Yeah, the betting number on this game has been crazy. Back in August, the Colts were actually a three-point favorite. They were predicted to be the top team because of the talent on offense and their schedule this year. But things uh, with injuries haven't turned out well for them. Some of the good news is that Andrew Luck has been practicing this week, so he may be able to available. Uh, and even the backup, Hasselbeck, is decent. You know, so, uh, but they're not winning it necessarily throwing the ball or, or uh, Indy losing but they throwing the ball. I'm telling you, watch for this rush game. They got, there's something magical, and it's the same template that they've been used in the last two or three years. They're just gonna plug it in with some other rusher. Yeah, they're, yeah that's right, because the Colts defense, they're certainly not contending with defense despite this overall winning record. Colts three and two straight up, but one and four against the spread. The defense, number 28 in the NFL in yards allowed. They can't stop the run, 18th versus the run, 28th versus the pass. And as you mentioned last year, they gave up a lot of points, not just to the Patriots, but the Steelers put 51 on them. Dallas put 42, and Denver had over 30. Uh, so here they are, Zach. They're at home. Uh, but is this going to be a, another Patriots blowout like three, four times in the last three seasons? Well, it's the regular season, so we'll see what happens here. Um, I mean, it seems like every year this game's going on, and pa Patriots blow them out every time. Uh, I know I've been on it two or three times over the last four years. But... This one here, the line, obviously, it just keeps soaring up, as you said, uh, before we uh, got on air here. It was plus three, the Colts, in the summer when they do those game of the year uh, releases by the LBH Westgate Casino. 
it was plus three, went to five, and now it's minus eight and a half. I think that's just just a little too high in my opinion. Um, you got a Colts team that, <clears throat> of course, started the season 0-2. They've had that uh, primetime loss against the Jets. Uh, week one against the Bills, they looked awful. And, of course, Andrew Luck, he's been out two weeks. But in the meantime, they won three in a row against their own division uh, rivals in the Tennessee Titans, Houston Texans, and uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, which that's what they do. The Colts win against their division, and I think they get a little bit underrated. Those, were, those, were, those weren't great wins, but they found a way to get the win. They beat Jacksonville in overtime. They had to get battled come back and beat the Titans and of course they held off the Texans but that was a Thursday game um, and they did what they had to do many teams would have forced their quarterback in you see the Saints do that with the same pretty much the same injury uh, with Drew Brees and Andrew Luck but they chose to sit Andrew Luck let him rest and I think they had this game circled they would rather have him back at full strength against the Patriots and get one more chance to beat this team which they'll probably meet in the playoffs again like last year but um Looking back at New England, this is going to be their second game in a row on the road. Um, they obviously destroyed Dallas, and I think Dallas um, – I liked Dallas last week at an 8.5, but for some reason or another they decided to dumb down the offense to pretty much non-existent, just like the Bears did against the Seattle Seahawks. I didn't understand it. You don't have a chance to win when you call plays like that. But um, still, I, I saw a lot of variables from the Patriots side of things that – could have went wrong if they were playing against someone that had a potent offense like the Colts. Um, and they did this against the Bills, too, earlier this season. They get too cute on offense with the leads. Um, almost cost them the cover week one against the Bills. But they, they went for it on fourth and one up by 15, 16 points, or whatever it was, got stuffed. And then it looked like Dallas might have a chance to get back in it. But, of course, they had back-to-back -back turnovers with Brandon Whedon under center. Um, you know, go on and on and on. And in the end... I could have a long, lengthy write-up about this, but I expect the Colts to play well at home. The Patriots will get too cute on a possession or two, and that gives you uh, this high of a spread. Back-to-back -back weeks, you got to side with the Colts. All right, here's some technicals. The underdog when these teams meet, 14-6-2 against the spread. Patriots have had the run of late, though. They're 9-3-1 against the spread at Indianapolis, and the last seven meetings between these teams, 7-0 over the total. Dallas showed how to defend the Patriots, how to attack that Patriots offense and pressure Brady with that unique scheme and plus put the pressure on him. Problem here that I see as far as matchups is the Colts really don't have that kind of personnel. Linebackers are not too, very good in pass coverage and they're weak overall against the run, 18th. And when you give New England any kind of balance on offense, they are just uh, unstoppable. And uh, so it's a very bad, I call it a nightmare matchup for the Colts as it was in two games last season where they were blown out. Uh, I'm not big on this uh, revenge or payback thing from Deflake. I think the Patriots will just play their game. But the matchup says that they'll, uh, they'll score a ton and they're the better, they have the coaching edge too. Uh, they've also been very lucky with injuries this season. They haven't had a heck of a lot and they have a lot of flexibility on defense with these young guys. So I think, I'll give you three plays on the game. I think the Pats win by double digits. I like the game over the total. And the top play would be a proposition bet because it's a Sunday night game, you'll see the Patriots point total. It's going to be around 33 and a half in that ballpark. Well, I played them Sunday against the uh, Dallas Cowboys over 29 and a half. Just barely got there by a half a point. The fact is I was lucky. <laughs> I needed a 57-yard field goal from Gostowski and then a late field goal too. That one I had to sweat because of the Dallas defense. I can't see the Indy defense playing anything near that, so I don't think I'm going to have to sweat this one. So I think the Pats score in the 40 to 50 range. That'll be the top profit. 